play against Ding and that's usually Himmelsdorf. That's kind of a normal, normal one, actually. Well, here we go, though. Oops versus Ding on Sand River, our first round. Oops on the attacking side, Ding on the defense. And so far, Ding coming out with the standard, boosting a little bit of the IS-7 on towards that A0 area to defend. Hulknik in the STRB. No surprises just yet. No, we have also pushed up with I7. That usually means that he'll try to take that A8 spot in a cooldown and dominate the upper cap from there. We've seen Ilian actually do it once before when Ding was playing a defense. And it, it's a magnificent position for such a turret because there is absolutely nothing that can pen him. Some HE shells, but he's always returning the normal shells back. So that doesn't, that's not even called a trade. Well, Karolf and Creator in these IS7s did manage to get across without receiving any harm whatsoever. So a little bit of... Of a good start for Oops, we have seen this crossing be punished a lot. Lolsha in the meantime, he's crossing over towards A8, and once he gets into that area, he'll be a mean machine that brings the pain. Only HE can really do anything. Yeah, he's impregnable for anything else here. Uh, yes, we've seen a lot of uh, teams take a lot of damage when they try to cross here, but that would require completely different uh, play by Ding. More risky play, uh, pushing more to the field, uh, keeping some tanks separate so he can get a crossfire. While Ding Oof. actually here, oh, was beautiful he blind, no blind shot wasn't. from Insane, nice. of course, breakneck. An instant reload, nice play. Uh, as you said, they will have to be more separated and uh, Ding just shows what their defense will be. That Lolsha will control the upper side of the map, who will go where, and that doesn't leave you enough tanks to do the damage while they're crossing. Well, Breakneck now spotting out both of these bad shots once more in his T100, getting some information. Yes, he did pay a little bit for that. The HE battle in the meantime is going on. 44 damage on towards Skerov. That's going to make a big, big difference in the end. Huge difference. Maybe that one alpha shot that could have ended in disaster will make him look better. But they already know. There is no way to dig Losho out of here unless you actually commit really a lot of forces from the upper side, go close combat with clippers and so on, which would make them really vulnerable for counter fire by the rest of the team forces. So the logical choice will be for these budgets to explore how sturdy is the defense here, but look at Meritorious, he is not a nice 7 and he's taking a lot of damage there. This entire Ding team is pushing out, Shokish is out in the open, trying to make a play, Creator already repositioning, Karol backing up around the corner, Elin in the meantime, fans, he's a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one against Raging Potato, who's in a very shielded position, Shokish, however, is not, as his IS-7 is out in the open for Oops to pick off, Raging Potato still holding off as much as he can, Elin and Senya are trying to 1v1 him, Shokish, gets removed, and that's the first pick for Oops. Ding, trying to counterplay with those double bad shots spotted in the south, but Oops's positions, just too strong. Really great play. Look at the Raging's position here in this sand dune. He is completely covered. They have to come point blank to take him out, which will happen now, but the price is already paid, and Ilian, he's on 95 HP. Raging will die in the next shell of Senya, but it doesn't really matter. The advantage is already there. Look at the damage Senya is taking, though. Kamil Milos and Decha from the base make short work of his bad shot. Yes, they lose Raging, but they've lost Shokish, they've lost Senya. Breakneck is still in that T100, and Elian is on 95 HP. These double I7s are still alive in the meantime, and Ding is trailing by about 2000 HP already in this one. Hooknik in the SCRV is going to have to do some big, big plays to make this even. We were talking about uh, possible mistakes in calls. I believe this was a premature one. Ilian is now falling. Ding thought they have an overmatch, but positions of oops were brilliant. The crossfire between them was absolute. There was nothing Ding could have done better here except maybe maybe just completely YOLO in. I don't know, would it even that help? I don't think so. Four tanks remain now for the side of Ding on their first round of the defense. And oops, coming out strong, six tanks alive. Trying to find overmatches now. Decha moving in on towards Lostor's IS-7. He wants to make this 1v1 play. He's almost reloaded. Then he'll be able to clip him out. He needs to be careful, though, that STRV of Hooknik is always ready and waiting. Creator without commander. Fortunately, Creator can compensate himself for that by, by skill. Decha lurking here about Lostor. He will empty the clip on him. He can take a shot. He can afford it, definitely. 
Yeah, Dekha though, there's a little bit of a hut there that he cannot shoot through. Down towards uh -huh. the one shot now. Need to be careful. This is getting close. Oops. Need to make these commitments work. They pick up Breakneck in the meantime though, which is a crucial kill. Meritori is dueling with Creator. HP getting even, but it's six guns versus just a mere three. Milos now looking towards Lolstrom. Mary picks up Creator. Lolstrom gives a big one to Milos. Milos now starting to clip out. There goes that IS-7. It's two V5. HP close. But the gun in the game is such an important factor, and they're losing heavily in that category. Many guns in the game. Also, mobility is completely on oops side. They have a couple of batches, four of them, and there is only Meritorious here. Theoretically, he can shoot them all, but mobility doesn't help him. All they need to do is just kill him from the crossfires or put someone on a cap. It doesn't matter. And that is what Insane does. And Oops pick up their first round, coming out strong. Ding, trying to make a counter play, but Oops ready and waiting with the guns in position. A little bit of a similar story as between Gohard and Kazna. I expect a lot of support here for Oops. I mean, five of them are Polish here, so they're like a local homeboys here. And this is a really good way for them to open the match. One to zero, three new guys that never played LAN and they're already beating Ding in the first round. Yeah, Ding there showing that they plan to be counteractive. Breakneck spots out double bat. They decide to make the push, but Shokish caught in no man's land. It was not coordinated well. It was not coordinated well. Maybe it came at the end close by HP, but the real situation was just how will Oops close the round? Not will Ding come back into it. Very true. Meritorious putting up 4,000 in his Super Conqueror, but he was also the last man alive. Hoopnik then coming out. But Oops made, well, they didn't make the play. Then kind of drove into the guns, but the position from Raging, the position from the IS-7, they were able to get supported very well and very quickly. We used to say we are really worried how will actually Raging perform on this LAN final here. He is usually the guy who is a wild joker. Sometimes he does tremendous amounts of damage or he just dies in the first 60 seconds and you don't know which side of the coin you will see here. But here, I was watching him in that moment. He was really super careful to monitor his position and not expose himself. He did exactly what it was supposed to in this kind of team game. Yeah, he made those connections. He made his clip and survived for a long time. Senya had to pay with his life to remove him from the game. So that was a good trade for him. He was on reload. Anyways, now Ding has to attack, though, on Sand River. Just not the easiest of things if the defense is properly properly, properly set up. Yeah, we've seen uh, how did uh, Oops deal with their defense, but it's more of a major mistake done by Ding in this. Uh, I don't know what would actually happen if Oops had to attack. Now, in this kind of case, Ding is not the best team on attack. We've seen some interesting tactics with lower cap by them. But usually, most of the plays they had did not come to an end, like in fortunate fashion for them. Shokish is very aware of that, I believe. So we're going to see what they have as a plan here. Well, they are going to be attacking now on Sand River, and they better bring the pain. They don't want to lose the first map to zero to Oops, because after this merger, we're going into Himmelsdorf, which is Oops territory. Oops, over 70% in defense on Sand River, while Ding has barely 50. So 50-50 chance to win. Well, no, that's fast. That's only paper. Paper can suffer anything, right? That is true. Ding on the attack again with that T100 light tank coming out. So they're going to stick with that one. Breakneck playing that one. It's a different role than we've seen him play before. Usually it's Senya playing those. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Senya was usually playing those, but uh, it's team decision, I guess, now because Breakneck maybe he needs to take some part of the lead. So he doesn't play those huge damage dealers at the moment. Halknik, Mary, Shokishen, Lolsho playing I7, Senya and Ilian on Bachats. Immediately some damage done on Milos because they're trying super offensive push over the field. Milos getting triple topped by these IS7s. Gotta hurt. Breakneck is on the move, on the run, trying to get out of there, but he cannot get any further than he is currently because of the position from Kamil in that T100. He is straight and Kamil wants to pick him up and unless. Damage comes out on towards Kamil, he will win this trade and will remove Breakneck from the game. It's going to be a crucial one, but there is already a lot of damage done here to the Milos. And this is a penetration shot while Kamil actually didn't get connected by Breakneck. Breakneck is on one shot. If he dies, and he did, this is a big minus for Ding. There will be some sort of response by them. There has to be some sort of response. Some damage being traded on towards Creator is the start. Shockish and Meritorious now rotating towards the northern side in their IS-7s to push back the tanks from Oops. Nobody there to punish the crossing. Milos takes one more shot of damage in his batcha down towards the one shot. Insane taking a lot of damage in the meantime as well. And yes, 
Sting has lost Breakneck, but look at the damage that has been done. And Milos needs to run away in a far, far back red line of the map and support his team from there. Creator is now pretty much on hotspot here because Ding does have a crossfire on him and we will see did killing uh, Breakneck actually pay off that much because the HP is just chipping away and not slowly. Creator in his I7 is in a tough spot right now, down towards 585 HP, no way to stay safe and Meritorious picks up the kill. Yes, you got Breakneck, but we'll take Creator in return, call it a trade. Not an easy trade here, I mean, not a merciful shot here. Ding did not miss a single one in that situation. Brilliant, brilliant play by them so far. 3k HP advantage here, so I would say that's a good trade, man. It's not only Breakneck, it's so much HP on all over the place. Yeah, both Milos and Kamil, pretty low in their T100 and Bacha respectively. One shot for either of these uh, I7s. Yeah, these I7s, there's still four of them left. This is gonna be... Tough, pos tough position to really make this work for Oops. I mean, for Oops to this work, Kamil would actually have to be spotting, so other tanks of Oops can do a lot of damage on Ding before they approach, but he's easily removed from the game, same as Milos. So if uh, Ding actually gets themselves in position to pressure one of the caps and separate the guns of Oops, Oops will not have enough raw power to come back into the game. Shokesh now already pushed up on towards the June, Losho just using this rock as cover, trying to get some connection on towards Decha. He's pulled down in his Super Kong. There is some sort of rotation here. It's a triple Pacha, Raging, Milosh, and Insane. But they're so low HP, they can't really afford to do this anymore. Yeah, Pachas need to rotate. Their only hope is for Ding to make some crucial mistake or a godly inter inter intervention of some uh, blow up. <laughs> like one or two shells in some of the I7s, and boom, couple off gonna have to pray for that to happen. Ding now just taking control across the map. They need to get towards the cap at one point because Oops is just trenching up. Number one base is an option for them but they have lost their T100. It is so much time left. So much time. Six minutes. Ding can choose to do a couple of rotations in this time but there is no reason. The upper cap would be a pure risk for them. Lower cap, putting one Bacha there maybe and uh, pressuring with the rest of the tanks forward is the correct way for them. They will have a crossfire, they will have a chiro fire by the rest of the tanks, and Oops will have to counter-attack with a lower amount of HP and even active guns. Tech and that Super Kong still holding the position. He also has binoculars to spot the gap if he has to, so he can activate those at any moment after standing still. Bad thing, you can see they're rotating. Hoknik, Losto are also joining towards the middle, so are the two bad shots. So that Northern play, Oops' gamble might work, but is it gonna be enough to shut down four IS-7s? I'm not sure. Oh, Ding wants to go point blank. They want to go face to face. Decha usually playing a pattern in, in the past, but in the same position now with Super Conk in those cooldown tanks. That's the way he plays. And uh, that's something similar, like Papapavian plays from Utopia usually. Mentor is getting a nice connection in the meantime on towards Decca super conqueror insane peeking out together with raging they need to be careful insane takes another shot of damage they're trying to clip out on towards meritorious but it's not really working out for them these bad shots have wasted most of their shots for virtually no damage now shock is coming over on towards Decca that super conk is isolated meritorious lost to hooknik are going to be joining them Decca out in the open he gets tracked get off trying to support as much as he can but they're gonna lose that super conqueror as Shockish picks it up and now double the hp available for Ding and Karolf, he needs a friend, he needs anybody to come and help him out, but nobody currently in position to do so. So Shokesh is going for the 1v1 and Lonstro will come up from the top. Senya from the bottom side to pick up another kill for the side of Ding. They're taking it slow, they're taking it steady and Karolf goes down. That leaves just four tanks remaining for Oops. Four tanks from Oops, no friends there. Friendly face is of Ding is the last he saw. Six guys of Ding are still alive. HP advantage is calculated immense 4k they would need a miracle to make this work right now raging playing on a7 has to duel versus Ilya and Milos and insane trying to hold off as best as they can but they have shockish pushing towards them and the cap in the meantime has started as well Kamil picks up Senya though it's a nice kill, nice kill for him lost no trades in the meantime shockish coming in for the double and now he moves on towards insane and his bad shot to leave raging the last man standing insane gets a tracking shot there shockish 
in his eyes. Stefan's not going to miss this one, though. His triple of the round, and that leaves Raging Potato. And just like Oops, Ding managing to pick up their offensive round on Sand River. It's rather interesting. I mean, Ding, I mean, Oops, try to hold their ground until the very last. Uh, preserving HP, everyone was at the end on one shot. So they really tried hard, but it was not enough. It was really simple tactic by Ding here. Position T100 light, super offensive, cut off any part, part of mobile rotation from Oops, and then push with enough meat in the form of Ice Devils into them to finish the job. And they did it in a really good fashion. The initial exchange, yeah, we lost Breakneck, fine. But yeah. like in the first game, the exchange was brutal. In return, they lost pretty much Kamil, and they also pretty much lost, well, they lost Creator for that in his eyes, and there was nowhere to go for him. They used stuck in the middle. There that was the main problem. To do. That was the main problem, because Milos was on one shot. Uh, creator, as the guy who is supposed to soak up the damage for the team, was already dead. There was nothing to hold off the incoming tide of Ding. You can see there the IS-7s from Ding. Three of them on the top 3.4, 3k, and 2.6 for those IS-7s, making short work of Milos on the crossing already. He wasn't very happy about that one. Hulk is doing his Zen meditation here, preparing for the next round. Pretty chill atmosphere here. Well, they're very used to this. At least Hulknik should be playing multiple LAN events now, over and over. But now Himmelsdorf Mojo, I think it might be even the most interesting map that we will see between these two, because Ding is classed as a master of Himmelsdorf, but then Oops is classed as the Himmelsdorf team. Yeah, Oops has a great rotations on Himmelsdorf, but we've seen that they can make mistakes there also and overplay. While Ding is, I don't know, that's like a, kind of their home ground from the time of Virtus, Wombats and so on. It's a really map they can handle well. Yeah, I made a mistake before when I said it. Uh, Prohorovka was banned, not Himmel. So it's, I expect an interesting clash also. As we've said in previous matches, we've seen uh, a new meta evolving on Himmelsdorf. Uh, incorporating a couple of new tanks, so I'm super interested to see what will actually these guys show us now. Well, we've seen a lot of type fires come out lately, mm. and I don't think there's going to be any different between these two teams, to mouse, be honest. Mouse is becoming an endangered species compared to type 5. Yeah, mouse is becoming obsolete. Type 5 is the new meta. Don't really have to aim that much. 600 damage to shot You will pound average. the shell or two, but you will pen every shell. At least for a couple of hundred, but potentially for much more. But that's not the only thing we've seen uh, that emerged on Himmelsdorf lately. So I'm interesting, are these guys falling under that kind of influence or not? Well, I'll have to find out. Creator looking a little bit nervous there on your screen. You can see that shockish, cool, calm and collected. He likes the temperature, yeah, hot, you know, cold-blooded animal. Well, snack in action. He did well. He is a great player, so we must give him that always. And very dedicated player. He yeah, has been the backbone for the team for a little bit now. Shokish is going to be playing the E3 and Type Fives to make up the defense. Three of them to be exact. Another E3, I want to feed in a bad shot on the attack. However, also, well, four Type 5 heavies, two 50Bs and a bad shot. This is exactly what I was talking about. You have the rotation potential, so you have that bad shot in combination with Type Fives. Now, that's a hazard play sometimes because if you play carelessly with those Clippers, Type 5 can do potentially 1,400 damage of them. This is pretty much uh, almost everything the budget has. So super risky play in that regard, but in the hands of Masters, you get a rotation potential. And if you emerge in correct moment because of the long reload of these tanks, you can actually finish off a tank. Like 250Bs come on a Type 5. If someone else takes the shot before that, he's dead. They are here trying a blind clip, trying to find a connection, but none has been found for him. Senya moving down the 1-2 line in his 1-13 just to secure that. He'll take it all the way down. Breakneck now rotating as well. Elian is going to be crossing over. So then going with a quite standard defense now for this meta. And St. Carol and Milos is going to take them a little bit to get across this hill. This reminds a bit, if you remember, on the old, old, old times when people would climb, back, climb up like KV-5s <laughs> and push from the hill. It's like a march of the elephants. But this is a kind of a new tactic we've seen evolve lately. You push a lot of uh, Type Fives up on a hill. If you don't encounter anything by then, you go down and you play, play the A line. That's probably going to be their play, and you pressure that kind of the cap. 
Deca creator in the meantime though joining up on the southern side of the map together with Raging Potato. Deca takes a massive connection that was not spotted. He takes about 1.4 from a type 5 heavy. I don't think he was spotted for that and somebody on the enemy team, Alien to be exact, is going to be very happy with that one. I believe Deca is now, wait, this is not the magazine I subscribed for, I didn't want to take this. But what can you do mate, mistakes being made and you are now a problem for your team because in any kind of rotation he will always have to come in second no matter what happens. Nice connection coming out there on towards Senya in the 113, that's the Type 5 Heavy from the hill, Raging Potato trying to spot him out, Senya looking for a connection, another Type 5 shell just about misses him but still the damage that was done on towards Deca is so significant. I believe Ding is well aware of what's going on here. Interesting part is, Alien is on Meritorious death spot. Merit is elsewhere, they gave his spot to someone else. Ooh, Breakneck coming out with another connection there on towards Raging Potato in that Type 5. He's down towards 2k. Ding with a slight HP lead, mostly because of what has happened towards Deca. But Ding is focusing a lot of tanks so they can watch down that rail. And it does look like uh, Oops actually might try to pressure on Senya's position, but could that pay off? Shokish is waiting patiently, so is another Type 5 of Ding in the form of Hulknik. And Breaknik is trying to get a counter angle also. Insane also takes a shot on his Type 5 now. That was low though from the bottom side. A Type 5 being so tall, you can actually shoot him when he's coming over the hill. And Ding still holding steady and still bringing the pain, bringing the damage towards the side of Oops, who are dropping lower and lower in terms of hit points. Ding now rotating. Most of the guns towards the northern side also is going to be crossing over. And this does not look good for Oops, does it? Yeah, it doesn't. But there is a play they can still do and it's possible. But I believe Ding is kind of ready for that. I'm interested to see because time is passing and I think it might happen. And. Uh, I want to show you something, like, this is what I think actually is going to happen. Uh, the guys actually from Oops have only one option. I think they will just try to push here and pressure the cap from there, because they have a budget already here. He can pressure this cap. This Type 5 can come back all the way and stay somewhere here to cover them and have a crossfire on these angles, while the fast 50Bs also join these tanks and try to focus the fight completely on this side of the map here, forcing them to come back in their crossfire. But that shot on Deha might be a problem, and I think the Ding forces are probably already reorganizing their forces. It does look like Ding is already in position to deal with that. Double Type 5, Triple Type 5, and an E3 ready. There comes the first damage on towards Milosh, and Sane takes now some as well, and Raging Potato down towards a one-shot. And this is not going well for Oops Mojo. Senya taking a lot of damage though. Senya goes down in return. And now the play from Oops is coming out. And let's listen with them and see if they can pull it off. Yeah. One shot. Bachat was still there, by the way. I'll, I'll he he I'll freeze here as well. Gets well you, you know where is Bachat? No. No. Yeah, guys, 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 you need to look Bacchat at fast because they're pushing us here. Yeah, we're going. Bachat yeah. and 50 look at fast. Broke shot. I'm they're just trying to, to kill us. Uh, yeah. They're so stuck. In Instead, try to take shot. In a shot. I'll watch that because we I don't know what We can trade, we can trade, we can trade. Because this budget is gonna come and, and help them here. I Mirosh, go into, if you want go to in Mirosh. If you can. Why? Okay. You cannot, I'm low. Okay, okay. Closing the distance. Also going soon. Budget is coming. Budget is coming. Ilian, shoot Ilian first. We will be last one with Budget. Uh, uh, Isaac, can you watch the right side? So he doesn't peek? Yeah, I'm gonna watch uh, Frag. Ilian yeah. will come. Bagnus is coming from behind. We need to make use, by the way. We're coming. Yeah. Ilian. Who shot? Who shot? With type 5, who shot? Alonso and... Ilion at least. Ilion, 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 Ilion and Alonso. Alonso is like 5 seconds to reload. I'm pushing in and I will kill Hulknik. And Ilion at least. That begins, Camille. Quick shot? Alonso uh, shot. shot. I finished Alonso shot. shot. I, I finished Hulknik. He has a shot. Ilion got Ilion got there. Nice, make this, make this, make this, make this, make this. I killed Ilion. Ilion shot, by the way. I'm kill, I'm kill, I'm kill. Finish those type 5s, finish them. Black Knight, three shots behind. Black three shots behind you. And I will go to the right creator. Go to yeah, the right creator. We don't need help now at least. Don't give a shit about this if you're. I know, yeah. I know. I will take. Wait, wait, wait. Please, no fire. Oh, fuck you, man. This Black Knight is okay. so fucking lucky. This guy's so lucky. The high is getting banned. Like, are you reloaded? No. 
couldn't get uh, that much lucky, man. Well, Mojo, oops, getting close, and that missing HP on Decha could cost them in the end. They were trading, they were trading well, but in the end of the day, Ding came out ahead. They made the overmatch against the Type Fives, and oops, wasn't in time to deal with it. They also made the correct call where will actually action happen. Oops was split by far. You can see it on uh, this peak because they were expecting that Ding will leave much more thanks uh, to maybe defend the rail. That's why I thought that rotation by Oops was too late. There was no cap pressure on time because most of the Ding tanks were already back and they were waiting for it. There was no option for the 50 B's or Barcha to come and pressure it from the lower side, which would be a usual play for this. So the TIE Fives from, from Oops were forced in that kind of exchange, but there was a lower number of them. There was three of them compared to the four of Ding plus E3s plus everything else. So they could not even focus fire. I don't think Tekka is very happy about what happened to him in his 50B. Um, but you have to be a specific kind of masochist to be happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting blind shot in your EMAX 50B for 1.4 by a Type 5 across the map who doesn't know you're there. Well, what are the odds of that? One in a million. Tekka just suffered that one in a million. Well, man, my, one in a million minus one because it just happened, right? Good play by Ilian here, 4.1k. Nothing. I would say exaggerated in these numbers, it's just a normal tier 10 heavy game, especially with this uh, health pool in both teams. Uh, good and decent focus fire and movements by Dink. At the moment, I would say Breakneck, if he's making the calls for them, he's making correct ones. Yeah, um, even controlling one of the type fives by going A line, even if Insane penned him, Break would survive, so he would still kill them. Yeah, I don't think that is very, very, very happy right now. In in this kind of game, the only way for the two 50Bs and Bacha that were remaining for uh, Oops to win would be if all the Type Fives from Ding were deleted from the game. So Losho, who survived the 500 mm. HP, he was a critical factor then. And then to just pour more salt over that wound, he actually did like over 1k connection on Creator. We heard a splendid comment of him on that subject. Yeah, also. I don't think he was very happy with that connection, but missing HP on Decha few rotations that were a little bit slow, costing Oops dearly. It was still Ding's defensive round, however. Got to keep that in mind. And Oops now transition on towards the defense themselves, giving them the opportunity to at least keep it all even between these two. Well, one man's happiness, another man's sorrow here. We know who is happy face in this one. Check his shock, look at him. The happiest guy in the world. He's always so happy. He even got a special haircut for this occasion. A happy haircut? Uh-huh. Happy uh, Shokish haircut, that's how it's going to be nicknamed. Shokish is always happy, but now back on track with our second half on the Himmelsdorf, and it's going to be Oops on the defense, Ding on the attack, and Mojo the trend will continue with the Type Fires. There should be no doubt about that. We could see it's a slow trade, it takes a while, it's a long and prolonged fight, and there they are. There is the Type Fives again, three each side. And we see a super conk even uh, from Oops, here we said that tank is mainly used now because of supreme DPM and you can put him sometimes in some cooldown positions. So in that regard, it's really useful, but... Uh, He's very itchy vulnerable. Yes, that's the big problem, especially the turret doesn't defend it anything against I-5. No, he takes, a, he takes around 500, 600 every shot and, and the triple tap. And die like flies. Triple tap will hurt. Kabil oh, no. already Whoa. getting blind shot at again. The beginning opening. It is for Ding. Kamil takes 600. He's lucky not to get penned. Wow. This is like skills to pay the bills, guys. Like Ding was 3 to 1. Bam. And straight into the target again. Again, a good read where there will be some default position by some of the Oops guys. Ooh, Kamil takes another connection there. This time it's from Senya down towards 785 HP. A bad start from Oops. Now Kamil's gonna be handicapped for the rest of this round pretty much with only that little HP. There's not much he can do. I think uh, Oops guys will start uh, thinking, do we have to start every round like this? Like not like this. There is a rotation coming in from Ding Tanks. They are slowly moving towards the raid. They knew, know now that Kamil, being on 800 HP, he cannot really be that far down. So Milos is left in his heavy to try to cover it with Super Kong, while everyone else is far, far back. Breaknik in his bar chat will have a definite advantage here. 
I believe he'll probably try to play something over the 8 line in one moment even. You can see all of the Ding Tangs, however, massing up on the K line. There's a lot of cover there for Oops, but can they do enough damage to really stop this march of Type 5s and Maus from making it across? A lot of tanks going slowly there. Well, you cannot expect a really super fast push by Mouse tank who goes 20 kilometers in its best days and most flat of the terrain, which is pretty much here. So rotation does take time, but when the things kick out, it's going to be a blast. You can see there the rest of the tanks joining up now. They are getting ready for that commitment. They are going to go for Miloš the way they are set up right now. Hulknik still on top of the hill. Oops needs to make sure to connect all of their shots on the crossing if they want to make sure that Miloš survives for a little while. Hook is waiting for a possible rotation to do some side shots. He can always do those couple of shots and then just put a reload and go full speed behind 50B. A lot of people usually ask me before, like, what's the difference between 50B? Why would you pick it over 57 who reloads faster? But 50B is a mobile tank. That's the most important thing. 57 is not that mobile. Maybe it's 57 is point blank a better brawler, but not for this. Now here we go, Meritorious already crossing over in his Type 5, takes the first E3 shot, and Milos coming in as well. Meritorious takes even more thing now on the attack. Let's listen and see if they can make it work. Давай, Да, я вижу. Вот тайп. Он попробует еще раз Чок, у тебя, типа, когда убьют Е третьего, ты можешь прийти, да, 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 дальше, потом, дальше поедем. Хорош. Хорош, можешь ехать. Блядь, вот так у вас, алло. Дай поубивать вот этого, вы, типа, срочно Когда дайте ему. Керальфа, можешь ты зацелить сюда, я выйду Хорош. там в жопу. Да. You can see Deng cool, calm and collected. Slowly but surely chipping away the HP for the side of Oops. Oops down to 5.5 Deng, still pretty healthy, sitting around 10k and it's not... Oops, Masters of Himmelsdorf, yeah, never mind. You can see this is like a chess game for Ding, and the uh, chess pieces of Oops are falling one by one, and they're just discussing the way how will it happen, not will it happen. Every shot that Oops guys pick to make, they do a connection for a couple of hundred, they take a thousand back. 
from three different guys. No matter what you do, you pay the price. And this is definitely Ding's map. They're paying a heavy toll right now to make this work, but Ding is slowly but surely edging forward, making more and more plays. Hooknik is still full HP on the hill. Kamil is there to control him, but in the meantime, the rest of his friends, buddies, are all across the map dying. Lostro is now pushing in with his very healthy Type 5 creator. Just 353 HP. There's really nothing Oops can do at this point. Interesting confidence by Oops to play Ding on uh, Himmelsdorf. But Himmelsdorf was always a really good map for Oops, I guess. So they were choosing between them that and Prohoroka. Prohoroka is a bad map for Ding. So I don't know. Maybe they made a slight mistake. <laughs> one can debate that. But this is not going to end here. It's going to be 3 to 1. Definite advantage for Ding here while they're dismantling these three tanks. But the match is still young. Yeah, and seven tanks stay alive for the side of Ding as they wipe Oops cleanly. 7 to 0. They made that attack look easy. It looked fluent, slow, because of a lot of slow tanks, but every position was covered, every angle was covered, and they were just working their way, way up, slowly grinding them down. And we have a really important and big lead for Ding here. 3 to 1. This is not something you throw away easy. Not in a caliber of team like this. No, going 3-1 down. Oops is going to have to do something magnificent on one of these next maps to make it work. Maybe Cliff is going to be that one. We have to find out. Cliff is a map where they can, well, not innovate, but at least surprise Ding. Maybe. I don't know. I see always that Cliff, like, 1-1 uh, red. Yes, Kazna took two rounds in the last match. That's true. And they took it in a really bold fashion, but I believe there was a lot of go-hard mistakes also involved with that. I don't think Ding is that kind of a team. Maybe we'll take one round, but both very hard. Well, hooking there in the 50B top damage dealer for that round. Miloshin at Super Kong. We said he was vulnerable to HE and he... That was a great move by Ding. One Type 5 pushing him out, then the other one in the Bacha just waiting for him to be pushed around the corner, finishing him off. Yeah, I don't know why they actually left enough space for Miloš to shoot on a breakneck. I was a bit worried, uh, kind of wondering, because breakneck was clipping out and that was very nice, but Lorsher could have gotten, gotten an angle to just uh, reveal backtrack of Miloš, so breakneck can clip that, and breakneck didn't have to take a single shell. But never mind, still, at it, 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 the end of the day, it didn't matter. The advantage was already made there. The initial salvo of Hoofs was brilliant, a couple of thousand HP taken away from Ding, Meritorious paying most of the price, but he survived. And so did the rest of the guys, and then Oops just started falling like dominoes. Yeah, uh, great chess play there from Ding, slowly moving across the map. Yeah, Senya made a bit of a mess of his trade with Decha, but it didn't matter, they lost so much HP everywhere, Oops. Same story on both maps, uh, on both sides of Hemosdorf. Have to gonna, they're gonna have to do better on Cliff if they really want to make this work. I like this play by Ding so far. Uh, we've been witnesses how hard this season was them for, uh, so far. Replacing not one but two players, one before the season, one during the season, which is probably the hardest thing, thing any team can uh, go through. Really difficult moments during the season and uh, the only thing that can go for them is the experience they carry and we noticed in the last games they are actually coming back. And they are becoming more stable, and the only game you can count as a fluke in that is the loss against the Suba they actually had, which shocked everyone and made Halknik very happy in the interview. Yeah, uh, that's very true. But now, focusing back on towards Cliff, Oops is the kind of team that doesn't play standard on Cliff almost ever. They always have these different kind of things that they try and show. So we're going to have to see what they have prepared. But they have in store for us this time around. They're 3-1 down, and they need to pick up at least one round on Cliff, preferably two. Well, Oops has a really good defense on Cliff, but their attack is horrible. That's the problem. And Ding is good, actually better overall on both sides. So, yes, statistics, papers, they can suffer any kind of changes here, but so far Ding looks really focused and prepared. That's the thing. And I didn't see Oops yet having a proper answer for that. Even that first round, which was lost from Ding, I would say that was a premature call to push. 
so they pretty much handing the defense over to to Oops. But all the other games they took. Yeah, they were. They weren't close. Now Oops though coming out double i seven Batrats behind. They're gonna have to make that work for them on the attack as Ding defend with five Batrats the TVP and an is seven. Let's see where will these guys head out. It does look like they're gonna try to put that uh, I7s in a cooldown on E line. And they will have a couple of patches proxying the middle. And overall, really aggressive response here by Ding by sending all the tanks up. They don't want to separate anyone. It actually tells me they might even push around the corner with some of the budgets. You know, Hooknik and Shokish seem to be going straight for the climb, however. Rage and Potato spots out Meritorious, trying to do some damage and actually managing to do two shots on him on the crossing. That's the initial play from Oops here. Trying to punish Meritorious for getting into position. Two shots of damage. Doesn't seem like much, but it's going to help them a lot in the end of the game. At the end of the game, it can be a whole amount of difference here. But so far, Ding took that, took their positions, and now they can actually rotate Breakneck probably somewhere back up, maybe, and climb him up. No, it's too late for that. Well, the I-7 is already pushing across in the meantime. Creator and Decha taking Shockish some initial spotted. damage. Shokish getting spotted out. Shokish taking two shots of damage. And Ooh. Meritorious in his I-7 is not doing much better. 511 HP left for him. Oops. Coming out with the aggressive play. And they're making it work. These I-7s are pushing up. Karolf needs to be careful. Karolf goes down low. What a Karolf needs to be very safe on this hill area. Down to 568 HP. That is not a trade that they are looking for. Yeah, Karolf is actually, as I said already, a bit cornered because there is a butt shot from Ding on the lower side, so he has nowhere to go. But Ilian is also in a deep problem. Milos picks him up. No, Creator picks him up. And this is a huge difference now because Mary is on a low HP. He's going to be pressed. Breakneck can do his clip, but that's not a tank that's going to bounce a single shell. Milos, in the meantime, picks up Meritorious. He goes down low for that. Breakneck is forced off. Hooknik picks up Carol because Ding is making the counter play on the hill. Kamel, in the meantime, being focused by Senya as well. Ding is pushing over left, right, and center to try and even this out. Kamel dropping off. Needs to be careful. Shokish picks him up in the meantime. And Ding have control of the hill. These IS-7s need to do a lot of work and they need to do it now. Breaking, he's buying a whole lot of time to his team, trenching up here and holding off this i 7 from healing deck. You're going to actually have to send someone to pick him up because now if they leave him, it's going to be a waste and he's going to be a permanent pain in there. But, oh, the check shot, but Deha still picks him up. That leaves four of the Ding players alive compared to five of Oops, and there is a significant HP advantage here for Oops. I would say they're still looking really good because Lolsho is the only guy with any kind of HP he can use to play around. Yeah, Lolstoy here has a duel versus Raging Potato and Insane. He peeks up, he gets the connection. Insane doesn't miss his either. Lolstoy is not going to peek this again. He will drop very low for that. And oops, moving around across the map now, putting his IS 7s back into work. Creator Decca pushing towards that donut area to clean up the tanks from Ding that are over there. The initial play from Ding was great, blocking Meritorious from getting to the spot and afterwards making sure that the IS 7s push quickly. Yeah, oops made a really, really good initial play. Now, also, Hulknik and Senya, it doesn't look like they have medkits. That gunner on Hulknik is dead for a long time, same as this commander on Senya. That is going to be a big problem for them, which is really actually strange, because we can see the Shokish has a medic. Yeah, Shokish preferring that medkit over the fire extinguisher. But now, Raging Potato, when he comes off Reload, Oops will make their next play, their next move. Ding still has four tanks in this game. They're not over just yet, especially because it is four bad shots. The burst potential is definitely there. Oops actually has to play slow. Look at this. All the time in the world actually made Ding rotate around. And they have a, not a crossfire, they have a triangle of fire. Like, they hold the hill, they hold the position where Losho is, and position where Senya is. But what they don't have is HP. And well, with Shokish taking another shot of damage, that was insane. Who's on reload now? Raging Potato has finished his in the meantime. Decha and Creator, because of Senya's dead commander, they could actually start climbing the hill and he wouldn't see them. Yeah, he wouldn't see a thing, but they don't know that, do they? So they cannot really risk that kind of action. Sooner or later, they're going to have to commit, and I believe they first need to take out Senya. So someone will have to go down. Well, it's going to have to be Raging Potato, most likely. Milosh goes down in the meantime for Oops. 
A good pickup there from Losto. Raging Potato now pushing forward. He's going to go down on the bottom side, like you said, to try and find Senya, who's an isolated player for the side of Ding. There we go. The double Senya did not know he was spotted because of that dead commander, and he gets double tapped and removed back to a four on three. That's how you say after this, never again with Fire Extinguisher. I need a medic. So we have four guys from Oop surviving now at the moment. 4k HP for them. Three guys from Ding on 1800. A bit separated there. And there is more than enough time for Oops here to do any rotations they have, they can to dig them out. And this is the best solution, I would say. Sending an I7 up, up to play Huldan against Bachats while you're protected by, by the rest of the guys, that's the easiest way to win the hill. Creator in his I7 is now starting to make his way on towards the hill as Oops look to take their attack here on Cliff. Ranger Potato is going to follow him up and that's going to be trouble for Hulknik and Shockish Creator taking the safe way around as well. And I'm not sure how they're going to try and deal with an I7 on the hill. Fall down screaming. That's one solution. Pray. Maybe to try and track him. If that happens at this moment, they actually have a fighting chance. Even this is a bad karma for them, not panning the lower play of, create, play of Creator while they're taking the shots back. Creator can afford to take two more before he dies. Ooh, shock is overextending just a little. Creator picks up his triple. Hooknik has only one more shot. Creator knows on just 23 HP. Well, maybe he doesn't know because he just about backed off. He should come over and kill off Hooknik. Trying to find a kill. Lostra in the meantime finds Dejado, sets him on fire. That's going to help out if he can find Raging. He tries to snap it off, but he doesn't get the connection on towards him. He's now down towards the one shot. If he hit that snap on towards Raging Potato, that would have been insane. That would be probably... Hooknik was flipped, by the way. Wow. That would even be the round. But there you go. Insane picks up Lostra in a round that's becoming much more dramatical as it goes than we were actually thinking it would. But I don't think Hulkling will have where to run now because he is surrounded with three guys. No matter how low their HP is, there we go. A pickup by Oops for the score of 3-2. to Multi-kill coming up out for Creator. He's going to be happy about that one. Playing that I7. A good move there from Oops in the beginning to counter Mary from crossing and then push their I7s in position. I would say a bold play from the start. But it definitely paid off. The crossfire they did in one moment when I7 Meritorious tried to pull away. And the uh, shot that came on a hill when Shokish was spotted bought them the round. G gave them all the advantage they actually needed to proceed on further steps. And then, like in a game we saw in Himmelsdorf, which is a natural map for Ding, it was like a chess play. Then only the better chess player here was Oops. Slowly, without huge risks, they were taking position by position, pushing Ding back and winning the round eventually. Yeah, Raging Potato there coming out with 4k damage. Insane with 3.7. Insane carries for these two teams, actually. Losto doing the best he could as well. But Oops with the initial better moves. It was weird that it even got this close for how ahead they were in positions. Amazing play, actually, by Raging here during all the games. Here, we said already, like, it's a hazard with that guy, and he didn't play that many lands, but here... He's like a fish in the water, man. He seems to be doing very well. That is true. Creator actually not doing that bad either with the multi-kill. Not overextending, making the correct plays. And now Ding has to attack on Cliff. There is a chance here to make it all even. There is, of course, a chance now because uh, if Oops doesn't do any major mistake here, they can pick up the round. And we are back in a business. And you know, always the guys that come back to the game, they're always in some the kind favorite. of slow yes. me mental advantage. But still, it's Ding, man. They know how thing. to come back from really dire situations. So they know how to come back from 4-1 Mojo, so yeah. I don't think they're going to have an issue with 3-3 three, three and then... They have actually done it also in uh, offlines. Not many, not once, but a couple of times. Yeah. Um, there are no strangers to that. And Oops still look reasonably calm for a team that we know can sometimes get pretty vocal, understatement. Um, they still look very calm, which is a little bit of a change from last season. You cannot even compare Oops from last season and this one. Uh, yeah, this one doesn't have Mayland. <laughs> yeah, that's a downside on the pretty side of the team, but by play, they are by calmness, they are doing by far better. Their comms, when we have them on TeamSpeak, used to be heated up before, and you could see there was immaturity in them, but now it's complete uh, opposite side. Now they're calm, professional, giving info, talking important things that are supposed to happen. There is no, I don't know, 
poison in there. Yeah, there's no toxicity no. on the team speak. And that is a big change for them. But now, coming into the second half of Cliff, Ding on the attack, Oops on the defense. And I expect, again, something maybe a little bit different from Oops. I hope you know what are you saying, mate. I always know what I'm saying, that's the thing. Oh, you and your little birds giving you the info. Well, we will see what will Oops plan to do here. I'm hoping you are actually right. I would like to see something dire, because these guys are playing really systematical and slow well, I'm not so saying, far. like, super special, but, you know, there might be a few tips and tricks here that could be pointed out. Tips or tricks? Tips and tricks for Mojo. Okay. Show me your Kung Fu. Well, the lineups on the defensive side, double I7, four bots and a TVP. On the attacking side, however, four bots plus one, that's five, and then two I7s. That's the way to go with that kick. That's called quick math. That's called finger counting. True. <laughs> but now Ding has to attack. Oops, gets to defend. And we can see already most of the Ding tanks heading into the middle. And Mojo, we can already point it out, either Deja or Insane is playing with binos on their I7. Mm, that's going to be interesting one. Milos is spotting the lower lane to see is there any kind of significant push. Because normal reaction by I7s here is to go and try to take the same position like Oops did in the last game on E2, where they can exploit their usual cooldown positions. But the secondary version would be for them to push over the middle in one moment with I7s. So they are actually going for that, I would say. Raging Potato is already in a back in position we usually see in STRV, but the vehicle also used a lot is TVP. It is a TVP in this case. Insane is going to be going towards under the hill, and Deja is going to be having those binoculars to spot anybody crossing back over. Um, how I know this? Secrets. Secrets and birds and little birds. Of Ducky, Senya and Ilian climbing to get at the top of the hill. So Ding wants to get an info actually what's the positions of Oops, Oops tanks. But they're already. I actually like this defense by Oops. They're really ready for whatever is coming from that side of the map. You have Creator and Kerov who are there to deal with any kind of threat from the water side, insane also. So they're protecting the back of Deha and Kamil there. And there is nothing you can do from a side of the map to dig that out. And Karov here just peeking out and spotting, trying to see if he can find but anybody. Ilosh. Ilosh getting blind connected, however. <laughs> that is a <laughs> nice connection there from Breakneck in the bat shot. Unbelievable amount of blind shells that Oops is picking up today. This is the third map, I believe, that they took about 800 to 1k approximately just on some couple of blind shots that uh, Ding is performing. I think very good with those blind shots today. I'll give it that much. Insane doing the climb in the meantime in the IS-7. Behind the rock. Impressive stuff. Well, he's going to have the hill now. Raging Potato takes the blind shot now from Senya. It just doesn't get any better for Oops. Blind shots are definitely in favor of Ding. But Insane is getting his IS-7 on the top of the hill. So it's worth it. It's only 1k HP advantage for Ding. Yes, all of their tanks are on 100%. But still... They are the one attacking. Ooh, Kamil loses his gunner. He does have a medic. He does have a medic, so he gets that one up. Decha in the meantime gives Shockish a connection return, but now Insane's made it onto the hill, and that is an IS-7. That's a problem for any budget who wants to peek there. Like, how do you peek on IS-7? You don't. If and you want to peek, you actually have to commit. If you commit, you will take shots from Raging Potato. That's uh, 1,200 in a clip. And if you want to kill the I-7, you need to load heat. And pan everything. Which, then again, heat doesn't work against other, like the bat shots, because it's so slow. So it's a tough choice to make here for them. Well, they will have to make and break the choice in one moment. There is no other way around it. Meritorious rotated on the other side of the map. So he will play a hold down from there. It's a risky position. He will have to go hug the rock in one moment of the push to get the uh, side shots on the Oops guys, but they're really covering their bases well. It's gonna be super hard for Ding to dig them out in this round. Chess game. Another chess game. Insane. Mind get connected here though by Meritorious. He has a clean shot on towards <gasps> the behind, and that one lands into the tracks. Mary not going to be happy with that. Insane is going to be tanking the RNG gods. He does take a connection return now. And he's not safe. Meritorious again. A little bit unlucky there. That's two shots dodged by Insane. 
It's really a long shot there. By silhouette, it looks like an easiest shot of them all, but he's rather far away and uh, it can be tricky. And you cannot always control 100% where are the shells going, but I would expect this to be connected, actually. At least the last one. At least one. Miloš, in the meantime, says hello to Breakneck, trading with him a little bit. Breakneck will now realize that his blind shots from earlier did actually hit. Breakneck trying to trade here with Miloš. Miloš playing it safe, not overextending. Breakneck makes a shot, does not connect. Miloš will get despotted very soon as well. There we go. Realizes this, peeks back out, and Breakneck's not going to challenge. I would expect him to at least blind fire one shell in a moment when Miloš is fading. But I guess they did enough blind firing so far. 1k BHP advantage here for Ding, but as we said, they are attacking and they do have a five minutes to think really hard. How will they break this Pandora box? Insane in this cooldown position, we can only say he can be maybe challenged by Lolsho because Lolsho can also soak up some of the heat shells from the TVP. And it's questionable how many of other Oops guys actually have a cover fire on that position. But it will require attack from several sides, so that's why I guess... It will require a commitment from several tanks as well. Oh, it will require commitment from the entire team, but especially attacking in Saints position, which is crucial for them, has to be attacked from the lower side, frontal, and you will have to probably commit Meritorious from the left side also. That is true loss. Four minutes. Four minutes does not leave a lot of time. Even for a map like Cliff, it isn't the biggest, but those reloads of those autoloaders take some time to get back I out. Thane is feeling something is wrong here. Well, he went back into his ditch, however. Losto is now... He missed the first shot. Yeah, Losto is still pushing forward. Is he going to actually drop over? Insane actually backs off, goes towards Camille's position. He does take one in return for that, but this is another hill that Ding has to drive over if they want to commit. If we go by uh, current time that took uh, Ding to get here, they're going to not even finish the, with the hills by the end of the game. Insane is proxying the position of Senya and Lolsha here. There is rotation coming in from Shokish from the backside, but oops, they're just holding the ground and saying, okay, we're going to give you one centimeter more, come and get us. Creator takes a shot of damage in the meantime. Lolsha facing off against Meritorious. And Lostov pushing forwards now, he's going on towards Insane, he wants to make the play. In the meantime, Miloš versing against Breakneck over here, but Lostov on the hill, he's getting pounded, he's getting wrecked. That TVP, like you spoke about, bringing the pain on towards that IS-7. Karolf in the meantime, though, completely decimated by all the guns from Ding from the hill. That was brilliant stuff to whoever from Ding to get that crossfire set up. I would say that was a what a mistake to make up by Kerolf. Now Senya will push into Insane. He probably knows Raging is in reload. If they manage to drop him, they actually have advantage in guns and the higher ground. They might actually pull this off. Two minutes and 48 seconds are left now. Oops, still with a lot of HP on the board, but seven tanks are in play here for the side of Ding. Miloš is now on reload. Breakneck has one more. So, so far, Miloš winning this trade, but somebody else needs to win theirs. On the other side of the map, Ilya now taking damage, but Decha in his IS-7, he's also kind of isolated. Raging Potato spotted out in the TVP. That's not going to work out well. He's on the run. He's trying to hide behind this rock, but it's just not big enough for a TVP. And more HP being bled here by Oops. Raging needs to go despotted if he wants to have a chance, but will he survive for that long? Nope, as Losto picks him up, just four tanks remain for Oops. Kamil has only one shell and he's going to try to take out at least one enemy with it being shockish, but I don't think it's gonna work. Time is the only ally of Oops in a moment because the friends are dying. They're picking up shockish and breakneck, but it still leaves five ding guys and twice as much F HP. Yeah, Decca in the meantime trying to duel with Bachas, trying to drive around these hills. Kamil's on reload, so is creator. Milos is the only one that currently has shells for the side of Oops. 22 seconds, they don't know. Decca takes a shot of damage from Meritorious. Hooknik now reloaded, he wants to pick up this skill. Can he do it though? He needs to get around and on the side of Decca, he has a damage. Oh, Ooh, no! Massive mistake! Decha. That must cost him the round, even! One HP remaining on Kamil. He goes down towards healing. However, one minute and 20 seconds left now. Dekha dueling versus Meritorious. It's a four on two. Oops, could maybe still do this. The cap is on, though. 50 seconds remain on this one. Senya is covering from the hill. Miloš would have to take him out of the game first and then go reset. It is a difficult task for any man, and Miloš is on a one shot as well. 
Milos is the only hope because Deha cannot go anywhere and Meritorius knows that that's why he's playing so aggressive but he is really wasting his HP. Another high roll maybe by Deha can delete him from the game and bring Oops back. 30 seconds is enough for this. Deha might have a reload before. No! Ooh, Meritorius so survives on a mere 5 HP. 19 seconds remain on the cap. Milos picks up the kill though but now he needs to go and reset. Can he find it? He's trying to blind Shalosh to Iliad. Can he find the connection? 10 seconds remain. Milos, if he hits this, he's a god. If he doesn't, well, they're gonna go 4-2 down. He gets spotted out to, and I think that's gonna be the end of him. Asenia picks it up, and that is 4-2 for Ding. What a drama llama round here. Brilliant play by Deha. He's playing super great on those heavy tanks, but that was not enough execution. What on Ding was on point. They took damage where they needed, and they managed to push away all the tanks from Oops back. Again, on two games advantage here on a half time. Well, it's a little bit of a repeat of the last one, but Oops, still not down and out. Four to two, still a lot of maps to be played. Ghost Town's gonna be in the next one. They're gonna have a little bit of time to talk now. Deja doing 5k damage on this one. The tactic from Oops, it was interesting, but the fire was just not there to really support each other. It was a bit static and uh, it costed them because they were stuck in positions and they gave a lot of time to think, to think what to do and they proved us they're really good when it comes to that. Execution was on point and I really enjoyed watching these games. Yes, they were slower, but they were super smart, super slick. Yeah, it's a very nice chess game and I think our analysts have quite a lot to say about this. So Ryan, go and take it away. Thanks very much for that one, Nikhil. So yeah, it's been a hell of a matchup between these two teams. Neither one really getting an advantage over the other. Starting out on Sand River there, Mayland, and things ended up being 1-1 between the teams. Well, yeah, that's exactly what Oops needed, a very strong start. And taking the first point, that was um, definitely really needed for them. And we could see there what really makes Oops special on Sand River, these great rotations, um, just actually baiting Ding in, like um, making Ding think that they have the advantage, but they, Ding just actually pushed into nothing and then just got trapped there. So yeah, great first match by Oops, but sadly they couldn't uh, continue. Continue into it indeed, yeah, we went into the Himmelsdorf for our second map. Anju, you kind of let out a little yell when we saw the, the blind shot coming into Deja. Yeah, it was actually amazing. Like, you cannot really say it's RNG because we saw that like in three rounds already. So that's actually the really amazing game knowledge, you know? Uh, yeah, it seems to be that Ding know, I mean, they're getting it from experience obviously plays, but they know roughly at what time the tanks from Oops are going to be and they've made those shots count, haven't they, Mayland? Oh, well, yeah, um, I mean, to come back to that blind shot, it's not only about RNG. You, you have to know if there is a tank going to be there, when he's going to be there, and then you have to know the exact, sp exact uh, spot where to aim. I mean, it's 500 meters all the way across the map. So, very great shot there. And then in the following round, uh, Cameo then gets uh, shot through the, the gap as well. From the, I mean, that was like in the first minute or so, like almost as soon as of reload, bam, gets a shot across. Yeah, I mean, same stuff again there. Great read by uh, Ding, like pulling the Type 5 heavies uh, halfway up the hill and then just blind shooting there. I mean, yeah, that's just a great read and you just need so much experience for that. Reading oops like this, just really great stuff. Now, this is what you're talking about earlier on at the start with um, oops getting that first vital win here. They got the first round. Not able to hold on to the second round, but we're starting to see the, the players step up. For example, we were talking about Crater being looking like Mr. Cam, looking like this is like his fifth LAN event or something, doesn't he? Oh yeah, comes straight out of Silver League, plays uh, first season, then straight onto land, and he really, he's doing it like a master. Remaining super calm, uh, super focused, and yeah, doing a great job so far. Um, we also got in to hear from Oops' team speak, Anji. Um, not as perhaps calm as we'd perhaps hope right now, was it? I think they sounded calm. Like, it wasn't anything special. Like, if you remember the last, fi last finals, I mean, it mm -hmm. was. That was insane raging on the, I think it was Milan, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no one to talk if about I remember it, yeah. correctly. So, yeah, the atmosphere there is really good I mean, in the team. A little bit of frustration we heard Milan coming through. Someone get shot, wasn't particularly happy with it. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Um, also, like, um, if you get blind shot that often for that much, it's going to be really, really frustrating. And also, being down 2-1 um, or 3-1 at that point, it's not so easy. 
it hasn't been easy rounds for either team either. They've been coming down to the wire, they've been coming down to the the final two minutes. Now, at the moment, Ding now have a lead. They're, they're staying here on four to two, but the teams have a short break. How do you think Oops are going to come back after the break? How do you think they're going to be feeling? Well, I think they're this, um, first of all, the break is a really good thing for Oops. Um, they have to reset, um, just come back together and find their focus. And I think it's, it's very, very good if they can start all over again, you know, um, just from zero. Gather some, like, the best would be if they could just um, take the next round, two rounds, um, to make it all even again and then just use this forward momentum to um, take the remaining rounds. So have you seen that one going as well, Anji? Yeah, I agree with Milan. Like, they need that break because if you look at the games, uh, compared to the match we've seen before, like, these games are much more longer and every team is taking uh, their time to do their moves, so... Yeah, I mean, you can't really surprise either team with any kind of rush tactics, do you? You have to play, like Mojo keeps talking about, both Mojo and Daki are saying during the cast, it's very much like a chess game. The teams are having to get everything lined up before they then make their attack. And it's also a thing that, oops, yeah, kind of played against Oops, like um, Oops, known as the team that always comes out with the initial move, um, try to bring some early aggression. Uh, we saw that on Himmel, we saw that on Cliff, for example. Uh, we also saw it on Sand River. Um, yeah, but uh, Oops, um, straight getting countered by Ding. Ding is ready for it, waiting for it, and yeah, just letting uh, Oops um, come into their open arms. You know, just greeting them with some really big, um, really big shells. Um, yeah, so Oops, I think needs to settle a bit and played a bit more slowly because Ding is yeah, really making very good rotations, very considered rotations, very, very slow. So yeah, great stuff by Ding so far. Sure, chat would have been going absolutely crazy here. This is Crater, I believe, picking up his multi-kill, just finishing off Hulknik in the last round. And it looked like Oops were going to come back into it, but Ding, again, just, just showing they're that slight step ahead, aren't they, Anji? They always kind of just seem to be getting the tactics nailed perfectly. Yeah, I mean, if you give a, enough time to Ding, they will really use it as their advantage, because they are tactically should be better than them. They prove it in the season before, on the Grand Finals, and even the season before. So, yeah, they will use it to their advantage. If you give Ding enough time, they will figure out every uh, position <laughs> yeah. of your tank, like exact position, down to the pixel, and then will, they will just de uh, develop like some sort of counter tactic and then just make their very slow and well-considered moves, and we see how that ended up. But I also would like to point out um, that there were several personal mistakes there on the side of Oops. Like we just saw um, Kevolf getting spotted in the middle of the map, instantly dropping from full HP. Um, and getting deleted, like, this is not, um, this cannot happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This can, simply cannot happen. And then we're watching right at the end here. It was unfortunate because Milo, she was saying, just doesn't have the angle to get the shots because there's a slight elevation there that protects the, the cap circle. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was his only chance. Um, like, Deja went in there, hoped for the high roll, for the, you know, typical Russian high roll. But sadly, <laughs> didn't happen. Uh, left Mary on 5 HP, who killed him then. And yeah, that was the only option to reset there. As you can see, Milos trying to make the blind shots, but they are, uh, the Kappas are actually in a small uh, defilade there, so they cannot be hit. Okay, now, Onji, your team, Isuba, they have defeated Ding before. What, what, what advice would you give to Oops coming out of this break to, to kind of settle their nerves and prepare them for what they've got to do? I think they need to play faster, you know, to surprise them, because it is actually the right recipe, I would say, for the, to beat them, because if you play fast, they cannot really react that well. Do you, th do you agree with that one, Mayland? Oh, you have to... So that, yeah, you have to bring a very controlled aggression, you know, not like a uh, full YOLO aggression. Just um, <laughs> yeah, everybody. I mean, something what we saw on the on the cliff round when actually Oops was attacking, they rushed the middle, like, and then just slowed down and doing it step by step, and they actually won that round. Exactly, that's what they need, like controlled aggression. To just put them on the back foot initially, then execute your plan rather than just go. Full divide, YOLO, you know, all yeah. in. Well, you take uh, the initial good positions that are, um, that are necessary for like a very strategic play. And that's what they did. And if they manage to do so, take the good positions and then um, not lose too many or too much HP in the process, then it actually always worked out. I mean, it's interesting what you're saying. I mean, we were talking earlier on the, the chess analogy, because it is like you're saying, like, if you give Ding too much time, they're already thinking ahead. So you're thinking, like, if they do this, we'll do that. Whereas Ding are like, if they do this, we'll do that, we'll do that, we'll do this, we'll do that. And they're already, like, 10 steps ahead of you. 
Well, it's um, also on, on Cliff or in Himmelsdorf, you exactly know where every enemy is. So you can do basically whatever you want uh, outside the map, well, like on the, um, where the enemies not are. Like on the, you have the complete map to do rotations, to do whatever not, and just set up the perfect counter and break the defense. Okay, well, right now, Ding are 4-2 up against Oops the Tough Giraffes. Can they maintain that lead or will Oops come back into it? They are playing here for a spot in the finals against Kasna Crew. How's it going to go down? Well, let's find out from Daki and Mojo. Well, we're not sure just yet. We'll have to see the rounds for that, but we're still, at least I'm still on the Oops wagon. I mean, my scoreline was 7-5. I still have some room to work with. Well, I did say Ding will win 7-6, so we will see. That still means that Oops needs to catch up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that still means Oops needs to pick up some rounds, Mojo. So, in this kind of the games, yeah, I think it's still possible. Like if uh, Oops takes Ding on the back foot of some map, come back in a match, it's possible. But these kind of prolonged games, I think Unji is saying it right. It, they don't suit uh, Oops at all. Yeah, it does seem like Ding is just ever so slightly better at that chess piece game, making the better moves and always getting some free damage here and there. On Cliff it was the same thing. Milos taking some blind shots, raging as well, and then Karol being pretty much a free pick for the side of Ding. He had no impact on that round. It's just that, just that amount of uh, experience amassed between all of those Ding players on various uh, LAN events. They were on so many of them between themselves. They were not always in the same team, but it doesn't matter. Like even Losho, the new addition, he was the part of uh, best teams in CIS. He played in Hellraisers, he played in NSS. Yeah. He played on a couple of grand finals. He's been around for a while, so he has no... You know, no issues with performing at a LAN finals like this whatsoever. Easy peasy, man. Like he sitting in the, your room. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but, you know, close to it. Now the Mojo, Cliff is done. Ghost down coming up, and this is a map that I am worried about with Oops. There we go. Another happy face of Shokish. <laughs> he is the picture of Ding's success. Ghost down, definitely a map you will favor Ding on over Oops. Oops is known to play in some really hazardous runs here, and always to make some slight mistake. By the theory craft, they will be lucky if they go away from here with 1-1. One, one. But yes. in reality, they need more. They need reality, a victory. They need to win 2-0, which is a difficult task for anybody, especially for Oops to begin with. On the defense, Triple Super Kong, Type 5, 50B, Path N, Leopard 1. And in the mix, the Type 5, played by Milos. We need to see now, actually, what kind of plays will they make? We've seen Kazna not controlling this new meta with Super Kongs that well on Ghost Town. And yeah, that's even an understatement. We want to see what Oops does. Insane. Obviously going to go for that climb in the Leopard 1. An obvious choice. Well, Ding is just moving towards the south side of the map with everybody else. Really mobile setup by Ding. They don't have a single Super Heavy there, so they can turn around and go play other side of the map while Super Kongs are playing the hold on anytime they wish. They have. Hulk and Lodzho in 113, so they can put them in one cap if they decide to do so. Breakneck here trying to duel a little bit versus Kamil. Kamil on the run. Needs to get out of there quickly before the shots come out. Zenya even moving towards the bottom side. It's a very aggressive move, a very aggressive stance here. They're expecting from there's thing. no tanks from uh, Oops here, actually. No, and look at that Lodzho already and Hulk push on the bottom side. This Ooh. is hyper aggressive coming out from Ding. Not what we're used to. Shock is from the top. Lodzho, Hulk, Nick, Elian from the bottom side. Oops now scrambling to get into position. Karov is out in the open. He needs help. He's trying to fall back. Creator's not doing much better in his Super Conqueror. They just about get around the corner, but now they need support because Meritorious is going to be coming from the other angle. And Ding coming out with aggression, but they're losing a lot of HP for this as well. Breakneck now being clipped out in the meantime. Karov dropping towards a one shot. Meritorious gets the first. Elian picks up the second. Two guns down for Oops. And now Ding continuing the aggression. Look at Raging Potato. Full HP Super Conqueror melting within seconds. And this is. Ding. This is Ding coming out with a vengeance and they're making it work. What a brilliant round here and there is no end to it. There is no end to this kind of pressure. The single shooters coming out and pushing out all the Super Kongs from Oops, taking them completely off guard. And then, then Clippers coming from the back to pick up the pieces. This is how you play the game, guys. Deja now down towards the one shot, 432 HP. Shokish actually misses. He's going to take some damage for this. Deja now down towards the one shot on himself. Senya and Meritorious chime in for two kills, leaving just Milos and Kamil. Well, let's make that Kamil in a second as Shokish is about to come off reload and Ding with the aggression to take down Oops towards just Kamil. 
This is not what they expected. I do not know what to comment. I don't know to say what to say to Kamil. Mate, you are so dead. This round is absolute example how to play this kind of lineup by Ding. They took oops completely by surprise. And then selection of targets. You can see pushing one tank by one and then focuses focusing creator who was last. Raging Potato, who was on 100% of HP, had to choose should I shoot an enemy or pull back to save my team, and he, he had to pull back. And then, in that moment when they thought, okay, we'll have a breather, Mary and Barchat came from the back to pick the, up the pieces and completely wipe them from the map. Beautiful brilliant, play there. Brilliant execution. Meritorious and Breakneck now coming together for his triple kill, and that is Ding, 5-2. With a hyper aggressive round on Ghost on and Oops caught completely off guard. Three minutes exactly to finish off entire Oops team here. That's a slap in the face after this kind of uh, break. They just didn't release their finger from the forward key throughout that round. Unbelievable. You you can usually say that Ding is a team that likes to play restricted and slower. But it was always the feat, even from the Virtus and Bombats when, when Koritz was leading and Breakneck playing with him, that in some rounds they would pick a specific round when to push and go all out. You get so used to their slow stance that you're not prepared for the hyper aggression that they can bring. And they are still very good at it as well. You can see the focus there was insane. Removing Super Conqueror after Super Conqueror. Yes, the HP was even, but. That dropped instantly when the last one, which was Raging, got focused out. You could say that uh, there was some kind of balance, but the positions and rotations were in favor of Ding. And once the first Super Kong fell, that was it. It's just like domino effect. They fell one by one, managed to come back slowly in the game in some moment, but it was only until the Clippers actually reloaded and uh, changed positions to get into their flanks. The game, as it is, is really dire. This is a huge advantage, especially when you play against a seasoned team like Ding. This is what we said before. If Ding manages to go away so far away from Oops, the chances for Oops to come back are really slim. Yeah. They, of course, they exist, but it's not going to be even easy even by slightest. Yeah, coming back from a 5-2 deficit is going to be difficult. It is three rounds, and we saw Kazna crew do it, but can Oops repeat the same story? I'm not sure. I think they will because I said 7-5, so, you know, five rounds in a row. <laughs> I still believe. Uh, you're a great believer, mate. That's why you won so many bets during the season against me. But never mind that. I let you in. All of them. Yeah, you're also very merciful. That's known about you. Uh, Ghost Town, now Oops will be in on attack. That's definitely a side they play better. I think it's used them better and their play style. And these kind of slower games, they need to go away. They need to try to find a way how to deal with Ding a bit faster, but on Ghost Town, fast game against Ding, that's, I don't see it happening. We'll see how they do on their offensive round. I think the issue lies within the next two maps. However, even if Oops pick up this round, bring it to five to three, then we move into Ruinburg. And after Ruinburg, we move into Mines. Easily 1-1 one, one maps, and that will see their fate. Yes. And they will need to win one of them 2-0. And they need to start by winning this round here, or they will put themselves on the match point for repeat finals for the third time in a row. There is still a chance, there is always a chance. And the only chance is that they actually actually perform it here. They need this round to stay in a match, and I believe Oops actually knows it very well. Because if Ding comes to a match point, they will only need one round of Ruinberg and Mainz. They're gonna get it. They will get it on one of those two maps, they will pick up at least one round, but now, Oops, with it all to play for, they have already qualified for the final battle. Everybody except for Gohard has qualified. Pretty much, I think, uh, but uh, there is still prizes, like uh, first and second place take much more money than the third and fourth. Of course, quali qualifier for grand final, but it is also a matter of pride. You want to be number one. They do want to be number one indeed. A lot of tanks from Ding here folks around the south side of the map. You can see that. Look next Senya. There is no coverage of base number one right now. No, they completely neglected it. They are actually anticipating that Oops is playing this side of the map, same as they did more or less. And again, that uh, meta with Super Kongs, three of them, one, two, three, four actually. My finger counting failed me at the start. Four of them for Oops. 
You see Insane now starting to push up. Deja Creator covering Breaknex in the back lines in that bad shot. Shots being fired, being missed, however. Breaknex just about dodging those. And now we can see the rotation, however, from Ding. Meritorious Shockage are backing off. Karolf and Raging Potato. Is this going to be another Ding push? They are actually definitely amassing for it. There is a really strong chance they're going to push in the side of the Oops tanks. Because they're wide open. Insane is caught and he's tracked. Wow. Here comes. One cage peak down. Decha in the meantime in his 50B getting focused out. Breakneck clipping out on towards Insane. It's another thing push. They want to take that match point. Senya going to come around the corner. Going to focus off Insane in the Super Conqueror. The first time for Oops about to fall. And he goes down. Now the rest of the team scrambling to get into position. But they're running into a wall. And the wall is called Lostro in his mouse. Decha peeking out. Takes more damage. Oops now forced into a commitment. They aren't willing to take. This is a crossfire if I've ever seen one. Ding coming from multiple angles. Yes, Shockers is being focused now. They need to pick him up quickly. But here comes Meritorious. Here comes Hooknik. Here comes the pain train from Ding. And look at the tanks from Oops. They're chopping as flies. And again, Ding with the counter rotation, the counter reaction. And Oops has no feet to stand on as they get wiped off the floor by Ding, who look to put themselves on match point for a third finals in a row. Mojo, it's a slaughterhouse. Miloš, creator, they're all going down. There is only sadness left here for Oops on this map. This is what you call being deleted, completely deleted and outplayed on every aspect of this game. There is a brilliant rotation that came from the unspotted tanks. Great pick even how to position them, anchoring with that mouse on a corner and everyone else pressuring the lower positions where Insane was. Well, we can rename Ghost Town to D underscore Stroid because that's what Oops just got. Absolutely wrecked. Six to two. A match point for Ding. Runeberg and Mines coming up. That's really... I mean, you have to be rather faithful or imaginative. I've lost, my, I've lost my faith. It's <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't oh, no longer no. believe. That, that last round was the tipping point. Oh, boy. From one side, I'm really sorry that uh, Oops is losing in this fashion. From other side, as we said many times, you get what you deserve in these kind of matches. And so far, Ding is brutally, brutally better. The rotations prepared. are on point, much more aggressive than we've seen from them in past seasons with Koreeds. They no longer hold in those passive positions. They're not afraid to push out. And they don't spot with tier 10 tank in that, the front that's line. That's also true. I mean, it's not hard not to spot with everyone in Steel 10, but I mean, spotting without shooting and just dying for free. That That's the difference. was a beautiful counter rotation coming out from Ding, and it decimated Oops. And now Oops has four rounds to make it to tiebreaker. And then they need to win the tiebreaker as well on the Sand River. They want to go to the finals. Now, I'm not a betting man anymore. No, it's not. It, I don't believe in Mojo. Can it happen five rounds? No, I said if it, it comes to tiebreaker, I still think Ding will mean, uh, win it because of uh, their experience, because of so many seasons they played before and tight spot matches. Uh, but it's not going to come to tiebreaker. I, I don't see that coming. It does look to me that uh, that breakup between uh, Koritz and uh, Ding suited them both well because Ding is playing well. They found their form with Lolsho and Koritz also is train trainer of Rush, formerly Navi. Uh, is doing well. They beat Tornado in last match 5-2, to two, I remember. They actually dismantled them. I was watching that one. So I guess it's a happy ending for both of them at the moment. They look like an absolute powerhouse right now against Oops and Oops. I don't know, Mojo, there's not much to say about them. They're just getting outplayed. Well, there is no other way to say it. It is exactly how it's happening. I mean, these two last rounds were just... Uh, there was not, no chess game involved here. No, no, no. Just playing all two, three minute games. Quickly on to match point. Ding right now sitting at six to two. One more round needed to put themselves in the finals against Kazna Crew for, what is it, the fourth time in a row? Season one, season two, Challengers Rumble. Shocky Shen, his face of focus. What will make that guy smile? I really need to know that. I don't know. Any inside info on that? Um, no. Damn, that's a very locked away secret. We're gonna make it happen before the end of this show, I hope. Ruinberg, 
oops on attack, ding on defense. As we said before, always the attack side was a super hard one, but we've seen it can be broken easily. It can be broken, and there is no more second chances here for Oops. They are with their backs against the wall, and they need to make it happen right now, or they're going to tip right over. And you can see it is the Nord all in from Oops. That is going to be difficult to pull off. Very difficult. It does look like they're going to risk it for a biscuit and go for it straight away. It looks like they're going straight for it. They're down with their backs against the wall. Let's listen and see if they can make this work. Run. It's good. They will be reloading. We can kill. Pretty be picking. Mary should be reloading. Okay. 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 I'm I'm picking. Picking. Milos, Milos stay. Yeah, I'm staying. We need to keep the Mary should be reloading or what? Might me. I don't know. Match up minus two. Yes, 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 yes. Budget minus three. Uh, I, keep on pushing, keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. You can go, get them. Go, go, go. We can yes, go yes, 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 yes. We need to kill them. We need to kill uh, them quick. Uh, we can see this PTB from here. Mary is gonna be reloaded. I'm more than ready. Uh, the come here and do one on Hulk Nick. I pick his Hulk. Hulk one shot. Nice, nice. Go from. Be careful. Be careful. Lost shot. Lost shot. Going around, by the way. He made shit from him. I have 20 seconds. Super Kong in the back. You play Huldon against Huldon anyway. You play Huldon against Huldon. You don't give a shit. Can I play aggressively here? Because mostly they're going to run with one bad shot. And I think... Bad, 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 Ilian is tracked again. Come, we will need to kill him. can reset. He's resetting. He's resetting. Breakneck will reset. He will be. Also, he's playing super aggressive. I'm aiming. Come, Come kill him. He's, he, he shot me. He shot me. He shot yeah. me. He's I in the open. Him. Kill him. I got him. Okay, Berek is dead. Let's try to survive. Deha, go back. Deha, go back. Deha, go back. Hide behind me. Ejin, can you take safe position? Oh. No. Okay. We need to pack Lolsha. Don't give a shit about this super comper. Elin's pushing over, be careful. I'm yeah. pushing over. Two shots. We had a perfect start. We should have killed this 50B before he could get the shield. Like, Camille, you were here, you were shooting him? Yes. Yeah. This 50B should never get in time to do this. If the 50B didn't get time to do that, it was one. I could shoot 50B only two times. Like, were you like completely committed to this or just peeking in the corner? Oh, like this. Like well, Mojo, it looked so great from the start, but then Ding recovering, and now Breakneck gonna start clipping out on towards the back of Milos. It's the beginning of the end. 6 2 down. Milos is gonna be the first victim. Camille is gonna be the last one in his bad chat. He's about to come off reload, and what looked like a one round spiraled out of control so quickly. Some bad shooting from Oof, some bad positioning as well, and Camille now with it all to play for. Four shots in the chamber, but it's not gonna be enough. Ding, yet again, gonna put themselves in a finals against Kasna Crew. Impressive, impressive play by Ding to recover from a situation like that. I like the moment when Meritorious intentionally made a block with his 50B, knowing he will die, making a perfect hold-on position for Super Conqueror to dominate all the IS-7s. They had no answer for it. The entire game, he revolved everything around that. And then Breakneck coming from their back, resetting and running away alive on 50 HP. Brilliant display of skill. Ding, well deserved, won this match. Yeah, very good stuff there from Ding. I mean, 7-2, the scoreline says it all. A dominating performance from them for yet once more. El Clasico, Kazna Crew versus Ding in the finals. We thought it might happen in the beginning, and it's still going to be that one. Will the history repeat? Will Ding again in drama?